How many people in this room this morning are oil junkies? Raise your hand. You're not an oil junkie? How did you get here this morning? Ah, well, you are an oil junkie. So now that we understand each other, I want to take you back 50 years ago. 50 years ago when Millionaire Denny was a real professional oil junkie. 50 years ago was totally different than it is today. The price of gas was 48 cents a gallon. And when you go to the service station, our gas station was really a service station. You drove your car in there, you had a guy come out, pump the gas, check your oil, check your tire pressure, and clean your windshield. Mm -hmm. You don't have any of that today. Even yeah. if you go to the dealer, you don't get your windshield clean unless you pay for it. One of the other unique things back then is you had drive-in movie theaters. You drove your car right into the movie theater. In 1958, Millionaire Denny had a Chevy station wagon. <laughs> nice. And the reason he had a Chevy station wagon was to haul furniture around. The unique thing about this station wagon, when he pulled into the service station, he said, check the gas and fill up the oil. <laughs> the main reason he had to fill up the oil, it leaked. And whenever he parked the car or the station wagon, he had to get this oil or the baking pan out of the back seat and put it underneath the engine to catch the oil. <laughs> this vehicle leaked oil like there was no tomorrow. He had a date one Friday night. He picked her up and they go to the drive-in theater. He gets in, pulls up to the pole, gets the speaker, puts it on the side of the window, then goes out to the concession stand, gets popcorn, Cokes, and some candy bars to keep the lady happy. After the theater's over with, he takes the speaker, hangs it back on the pole, and he goes to try and start the car. It don't start. <laughs> Everybody had cleaned the theater, the theater, I mean the drive-in, is empty. And he's the only guy still there. And the owner comes back and he gets some helpers and he pushes his car out the gate. And as he pushes him out the gate, he says, good luck. Yeah. And nice. closes the gate and locks it up. Yeah. Now he's got his girlfriend, or the girl date is in the car and he says, hang in there. I'm going to go and find out what my real problem is. And the real problem is he ran out of gas. <laughs> <laughs> what was he thinking? He was. That's it. You got it. <laughs> so he gets the gas. Gets It's a late night for the, for the date. It was like 3 o'clock in the morning by the time he got her home. After that, he never saw that lady. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> the Chevy station wagon became a real problem and it was starting to cost a lot of money in parts and oil. So they decided it's time to trade up. In 1961, he trades it for a, a 1961 Dodge Dart. And it had a slant six, yes. a slant six yes. engine. The reason he was going for that, it didn't leak any oil, <laughs> and it was good on gas. Ooh. One problem with that car, very dangerous when you're pulling out into a line of traffic. Because he hit the pedal to the metal and wasn't going anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> now let me tell you, when it's not going anywhere, it's dangerous. People are zooming, because you've got to get up to speed to run into the line of traffic. It took a while, it took, actually took months, <laughs> actually even a year to really get used to no power. 
<laughs> One weekend, he decides to go to Lake Tahoe and check out what's going up on up there. On his way back from Lake Tahoe, he runs out of gas the second time. What was he thinking? He, he wasn't. wasn't. <laughs> Unbelievable. As the years go by, in the Dodge Dart, he decides he's had enough of having close calls and no power. It's 1969. He decides he's going to buy a 1968 Dodge Charger. Mm -hmm. Big 440 engine in it. More power than he could ever imagine. And it was a big difference between a slant six and a big V big V eight. And it used a high octane gas. So we're really sucking gas. But when he hit the pedal, the wheels would chirp. <laughs> and he would pull up the red light, and next thing you know, there'd be a Chevy and a Ford revving their engines like they were racing. <laughs> In nineteen sixty-nine, I guess it was sixty. He had to take a trip to New York. And he's driving to New York. And as he gets to Indiana, as he gets to Indiana, he runs out of gas. Oh. <laughs> what was he thinking? He wasn't. he wasn't. Only this time it's serious. It's raining outside. And I mean, it's raining cats and dogs like it was no tomorrow and the closest gas station is 10 miles away. Oh. <laughs> Serious problem. I will say this. This was the last time Millionaire Denny ever runs out of gas. <laughs> Soaking wet. It took him all day. In fact, it was day and late into the night before he got that problem resolved. 10 miles! Soaking wet, not a good feeling. <laughs> After that, he finds out that he really needs to check into oil rehab. <laughs> <laughs> no, oil rehab. He has to get into oil rehab. And he finds out it's a three-step process. A three-step process. Now pay attention, because all of you guys are oil junkies, and you need to take a lesson here right now. Because you need to check yourself into oil rehab. Step one. It's a three step. Step one. You've got to get to the atomic battery. The atomic battery developed. And you're saying, what's this guy talking about? No, an atomic battery. They're working on it right now, but it's not quite there yet. And what it does, it replaces all our oil burning, coal burning plants that we have across the United States. And once we replace all of those oil burning, coal burning plants with atomic batteries, that's step one. You've completed step one. Now you go to step two. Step two is you get the high speed rail going. You start city to city, state to state, coast to coast. Very important to get the high speed rail in. Step three, we're getting there, step three. Step three, you start putting in charging units at all these rest stops. And you get them in, the gas stations convert over into charging stations because of the electric car. And once you get there, you've almost completed your oil rehab. But it's gonna take probably 100 years to complete this. So don't get too excited. But I'm getting excited because it's close. It's close. And I think I've got you converted getting into oil rehab. Today is 2011. Are we better off today than we were 50 years ago? Think about it. I know one thing, I'm not running out of gas anymore. <laughs> and I am in oil rehab. Mr. Toastmaster. <laughs>